segment of our cybersecurity news. The previous cybersecurity news report we did received a lot of attention and comments, most of them being complaints. No, I'm joking. Most of them were compliments. So thank you very much. I have even had people walk up to me to ask, so what was that cybersecurity news report all about? What did you aim to achieve? from the United States of America, and that's a long way from Singapore. Blame me, I don't know, maybe we just wanted to make a bunch of people mad, or maybe just raise some cyber awareness. You tell me. Now I know what you're thinking, nobody asked for this. Not again, we barely survived the first one, and here's another one. But let me tell you, it's either this, or watch Boris Johnson the telly, talking about the bloody Brexit for another 20 to 30 years. And I don't know you, but I'm not ready for that. So now for the news. Cryptowire, a security company, has revealed a total of 146 new vulnerabilities impacting Android device users. That's really bad, but wait, there is more. The further stated that these vulnerabilities are ready on the smartphone when you purchase it. The CryptoWire CEO told that if the problem lies within the device, that means the user has no option. I definitely agree. Because the code is deeply buried in the system in most cases, the user cannot do anything to remove the offending functionality. Well, like we do not have enough news about vulnerable Android apps, now we are told here is a loads dangerous software and applications to go with your purchase. Enjoy your new phone. They are probably proud of it too. I can just also imagine the new advertisement going like, buy one device and get 146 different vulnerabilities and malware, completely for free. No need to thank us. And when Android users complain that there is something wrong with their brand new phone, they are told, sorry sir, it is going to cost you extra money to remove that malicious application. You heard me right. Therefore, Android users are only left with the option of trusting that device vendors will protect them from potential harm, even though they were the ones that put it in there in the first place. Besides that, the only other way to stop it is by setting your phone on fire and looks like one of the biggest brands had this already covered. I guess you know. Oh wow, feels so much safer now. I know that there is the ven there are the vendors protecting me and we have the Android Avengers on it. We can rest easy now. But here's an important message for you to be serious. Don't trust blindly applications, software, or even hardware without a proper security due diligence. What does it mean? Check it out, people. Make sure that you have reviewed any security controls, privacy controls. If not, you're gonna be recording in the shower while singing in the rain, singing in the rain. No, I'm not a good singer, no. Moving on, a hacker known as Phineas Fisher has published more than two terabytes of data from the Cayman National Bank. This includes more than 640,000 emails and the data of more than 1,400 customers. Wow, this is awkward. Excuse me, I got to make an urgent call to my financial advisor. I come back, I come back. Hi, G. how are you? Good, good, family is good. Great, you remember that account in Cayman National Bank? Please close it now. Close it now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks, bye. Well, jokes apart, I didn't have any money in that account to begin with. And who says being broke doesn't have its perks? But these are dangerous times we live in, folks. Effective cybersecurity has never been as critical as it is now. It is a good thing all the hacktivists 
have have published were actually emails, addresses, and junk. If he managed to publish account details, I wouldn't be joking about it for sure. The hacker accuses the bank of money laundering. He also called on other hacktivists to raise up and hack banks, oil companies, and other big corporations. Wait a bloody second. So this guy is just doing all of this for a good cause. Here's some kind of hero of the masses, like Robin Hood. No, wait, got it. It's a hacking hood. Okay, okay, maybe hacking hood is terrible. But actually, I, I think hacking hood is cute. Anyway, so people, there's another perspective that I'm giving you on cyber. Not all are after your money. Some take the hacking to fight an ideology or political view, etc. This is called hacktivism. In other news, payment solutions giant Evan Red today revealed in a statement that the malware incident affected an undisclosed number of its computing systems. This led to an investigation to establish the extent of the infection. In 2018, the French group managed 2.5 billion specific purpose payment transactions, presenting roughly 30 billion in business volume. Transactions carried out via cards, mobile apps, and online platforms. Wow, 30 billion in business volume. Well, they, that's their fault for choosing a name like Ederet. No wonder Hacking Hood is fighting the fight. And they are still investigating. And by the way, I think it was like yesterday. It depends on when you watch the video. So people, let me explain. Commonly, antivirus and anti-malware are used interchangeably as terms. They both refer to software designed to detect, protect against, and remove malicious software. That being said, anti-malware can stop a viral infection from happening and remove infected files. However, anti-malware isn't necessarily equipped to restore files that have been changed or repressed by a virus. Anyway, they have different functionalities as well. And we need to remember that there is no currently 100% effective security solution that will prevent your business or your digital identity from being hacked. Yes, you heard me right. With more than 300,000 new malware every day, do not, not expect to be protected from all of them by one solution. Only layered security or defense in depth can help. This means you need to enable additional security. Finally for today, dark web researcher Vinnie Troyer reported having uncovered a massive collection of social media and internet users' data in an easily accessible and insecure server. This data comprises 4 terabytes of personal information or about 1.2 billion records in all. Cricket that's large. The data, however, doesn't include sensitive information like passwords, credit card numbers, or social security numbers. It does, however, contain profiles of hundreds of millions of people that include home and cell phone numbers, associated social media profiles like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, GitHub, work histories, seemingly scrapped from LinkedIn, and almost 50 million unique phone numbers and 622 million unique email addresses. It's okay guys, no password or credit card information. Just your phone numbers, Facebook and other profile. I for one deleted my personal Facebook profile many years ago. Yep, as soon as my parents got in there, I got out. So that was a long time ago. And as for my phone number, let them have it. I gotta tell you, it's kind of lonely even telemarketers do not call me anymore. After I asked the last one if she also suffered from indigestion after eating a mala hot pot every day for lunch. All telemarketers have since stopped calling me. Anyway, this data exposure is just the latest in a seemingly endless string of large scale discoveries. So ladies and gentlemen, we have to be careful with the information we share online and we all have to be cyber vigilant and cyber responsible. Cyber thieves are everywhere looking to steal your personal information, your Wi-Fi and your Netflix subscription password. So be mindful. Thank you for joining us and have a wonderful day.